Hey, it's Marcus Boff Truth. So um, I wanted to share this because I was on a walk, and um, I'm, I try to think of a way I can convey this. But um, I was on this walk, and I saw something. I was like, let me share this. <laughs> let me share this. Like, this is, I would say it's amazing. You know, I believe the Bible. Um, anyway, so, but uh, I just want to share this with you guys. It says, um, in Genesis 7.20, it says, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains... And the mountains were covered, right? It says, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, of cattle, of beasts, of every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth, and every man, okay? All in whose nostrils was the breath of life. Now, you know how I am with the Bible, like, when God talks about these things, it says, look, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed, they were destroyed from the earth, there's a car behind me, they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark, okay? So it says everything. It talks about all the hills were covered, guys. So that's the point I want to, really I want to point out here, we're talking about this, is I just want to get to the part where it talks about all the mountains were covered. Really, it says that. So it says 15 uh, cubits upward uh, did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, okay? So that's the point that I want to talk about. So I was on this walk, and I think I explained it in the video, so I won't get too much into it, but uh, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, the, the Bible is, is true. Unfortunately, you know, you have the, the Bible that, you know, KJV in English is God's preserved word. You have these other versions of Bibles that are changed, and they change them for a very specific reason. They started adding things in there that shouldn't be in there. You know what I'm talking about. Um, the Bible basically says the children of the flesh aren't children of God. I'm going to reemphasize that because that's why you got to be born again, guys. The first time you're born because your mom and dad decide to have sex, and that's, uh, or, or not, could have been rape. But anyway, some two people had sex, and that's why you're born the first time. Uh, you know, of, of corrupt seed. The corrupt seed is the seed, the, the carnal seed, the, which is seed, which is temporal. And you got to be born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth. That word endures forever. That's why Jesus says, "My sheep never perish, but all flesh does perish." So He's saying, when you're born again, you're a child by the Spirit of the Spirit, and He's saying, "The children of the flesh are children of God." And he's called the Father of Spirits. So. Uh, there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is God only by spirit. Uh, he's the man, the mediator between God and man by flesh. Uh, it says it raised his mortal body. They tried to do hypostatic union because they're trying to combine the flesh. The reason they're trying to combine the flesh is because flesh has skin, but the Bible already says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They're trying to add the flesh so they can add skin, and they're trying to add skin so they can paint it a certain color. And I don't care what association you want to give that color, whether you call yourself a so-called Hebrew Israelite or whether you call yourself a so-called Zionist, or whether you call yourself a Catholic or Christian or whatever you want to call it, Buddhist, whatever you want to call it. The children of the flesh aren't children of God. So if you've got to be born again, anybody who's making up this, this lie, they're basically saying they don't have to be born again, a whole new creature. And they're basically saying that their, their current flesh, they're not corrupt. So... The Bible says God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The Bible says the children of the flesh cannot please God, but I'm going on and on. So I say that because I want to have you understand who God is. God's a spirit who comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, and he's here right now. It's, it's, it's Christ, it's God that worketh in me, the God that worketh in all those who believe who, to fulfill his good will and pleasure. So he's here right now. If he's not here right now, then how is anyone being saved? Uh, how are you saved? How are you speaking the truth without God who is truth in you? That makes no sense, right? So I, I want to convey that because when I give you the gospel and I say, look, Christ died for our sins, well, the Christ that died for our sins was the mediator, right? He was buried. He rose again the third day. And it says God raised him from the dead. And then it says, well, if God raised him from the dead, who is God? It says he was quickened by the Spirit. God is the Spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in the Spirit and the truth. And he says, Handle me and see that it is I myself, a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see here that I have. So he's letting you know that God is a spirit, and the spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. And he's saying in Second Corinthians 4.18, the things which are seen are temporal, the things which are not seen are eternal. He's the eternal God, immortal, uh, eternal, invisible, the only wise God. It says the only wise God. 
So it says that right there in the Bible. It's there for all to see. Uh, but again, man, again, they, man wants to make this world his kingdom. And his kingdom doesn't have darkness in it. Flesh can't even enter his kingdom. Flesh and blood can't even enter his kingdom. His kingdom is light. There is no darkness. There is no sin. There is no corruption. All that kind of stuff. It's not in his kingdom. So that is just clear. You believe. You you pass from death to life. You're a new creature created in Christ. And you're born again. And it says you'll never perish. Now, you know your flesh is going to perish. You know, you guys are going to so-called funerals. And remember when Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. God's God of living and not the dead. That's what he's talking about. He's basically saying, oh, well, children of the flesh aren't children of God anyway, so I, I don't let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> you know, he's like, let the dead. Notice this. Notice the phraseology, guys. Let the dead bury the dead. You're like, if they're both dead, how they going to bury the dead? If they're both dead, how they, that don't make no. See, people say at that point, these so-called people who say they're Bible literalists because really they're carnalists. They don't want to say, oh, I'm carnal. So their way of getting around saying I'm carnal because they're trying to make uh, the children of the flesh the children of God, and they say I, I take the Bible literally because they don't want you to, they don't want you to understand the Bible spiritually discern. So they just say, how can I get around saying I'm carnal? Uh, they just say, oh, I'm 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 a, I'm a literalist. But you gotta say, well, what did Jesus mean when he said let the dead bear the dead? That's what you you have to remember. Jesus says I come to give life. He says when we believe, he says we pass from death. To life. It's like, wait, well, pass from death to life? What are you talking about? I'm not dead. What do you mean, you let the dead bury the dead? What what a confusing, what a confusing statement. Let the dead bury the dead. Well, God considers you, while we were dead in our sins, Christ died for us, right? So the Bible is very, actually very clear, guys. Uh, God, God is not trying to confuse us. God is letting us know that he's the way, the truth, the life. And it's the spirit that quickens give us life. God's the spirit, and those that worship him most worship him, the spirit of truth. You can't even worship him in your flesh. In your flesh, well, it's no good things. That's filthy rags, okay? I'm going way on on this. I was showing this video to talk about something else, but I feel like I should give you the gospel because the Bible says, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Uh, let whosoever come. Uh, you need to take and drink and eat. Eat the bread of life. Drink the living water. You need to believe it. Believe it. Because he says, when you eat it, you'll never thirst. I mean, you eat it, you'll never hunger. You drink it, you'll never thirst. What? Again, all these literalists, so-called literalists, what does that mean? Yet they're going to have lunch right now at some restaurant, working working on how they're going to get more tithing money. <laughs> you know? You go on to the pastor's breakfast conference, luncheon, dinner, association, pastor appreciation day. See, they, these guys are exploiting you every, every, in all ways, because they're all about that filthy lucre. So I'm just, you know, kind of rambling right now. But, um, you know, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So guys, I'm on a walk, and um, I see seashells at the top of a hill. It's a pretty high hill. These are typically at the bottom of the ocean, but here you have fossilized seashells where they should not be, right? Isn't that something? I'll show you where we're at. This is where we're at. I came over that hill. That's the ocean over there. Way over there is the ocean. So just so you know that these are really seashells, here you go. You can see them. Right here. So those are fossilized seashells. Isn't that amazing? So it's really cool.